And the Bible says that when it was made for the devil and his angels, it was made therefore as a place of punishment, not a place to simply go to. It is designed for punishment. Whatever goes to hell stays in hell. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why he died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. Just one name that can keep you out of hell. And it's the name of Jesus. Hell is full of murderers. How can I not go to hell, preacher? One name. One name given among men whereby we must be saved. Only one name. Only one name. That's the name of Jesus. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. What does it mean to have him preach? That means you've embraced him. You believe on him. He's in you. He's your savior. You're going somewhere. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me tell you where hell is. It'll be at the end of your life. If you don't know the Lord. If you're living a godless life and you're an atheist or an agnostic, Christ rejecter, you can be certain of this, the day will come when you will discover firsthand that there is a hell. The energy on the planet is really intense right now and you may be feeling a little bit like crap. <laughs> Aches and pains, fears, insecurities, worries, old beliefs, all of these things may be coming up and swirling around you. And you may be wondering, what the heck is happening? Why is this so intense? What's going on? And the answer to these questions is that... We are now living in a new energy called the fifth dimension. But we are now living in a new energy called the fifth dimension. And in this video, I'm not only going to give you a behind the scenes look at what the fifth dimension is, but I'm also going to share two essential skills that we must all learn in order to navigate these challenging but beautiful new energies. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes. The Heart Alchemist. The Heart Alchemist. Here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In this week's video, I'm talking about the intense energies that we're feeling on the planet, what it means for us, and also sharing some really important skills to help you navigate these energies with more peace and joy. Chapter 5. Now, brothers, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work live in peace with each other and we urge you brothers warn those who are idle encourage the timid help the weak be patient with everyone make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else be joyful always pray continually give thanks in all circumstances for this is god's will for you in christ jesus 
Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. Are you struggling to find meaning in your life? Do you feel deeply depressed or sad, not knowing how to get yourself out of what seems like a bottomless pit, a bottomless pit? Are you experiencing a string of painful events or losses in your life, one after the other after the other? If so, you may be experiencing what's known as the dark night of the soul, as the dark night of the soul. And in this video, I'm going to help you understand what this phenomenon really is, and most importantly, how you can come out of it more quickly. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopez, the heart alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. In this video, we're talking about a spiritual phenomenon known as the dark night of the soul, and I'm going to be answering five key questions to help you understand this process and to help you come out of it more quickly. The first question is, what the heck is a dark night of the soul? So that's question one. The second question is, what are the top signs of a dark night of the soul. Then, why is it happening to me? So why does the dark night of the soul happen? The fourth question is, how long does the dark night of the soul last? And then the fifth and probably most important question is, how can I accelerate or come out of the dark night of the soul more quickly? All right, so th these are the five key questions. Once we answer these key questions, you're going to get a lot of actionable tools to actually help you navigate, live through the dark night of the soul if you are going through one and how you can navigate and come through it more quickly. All right, let's get started. Okay, so what's the dark night of the soul? A lot of teachers say that the dark night of the soul is this period in your life where you go through this sort of spiritual depression, or some teachers call it an existential crisis, where life loses all of its meaning or purpose to you. But I actually want to go a little deeper in this definition because I want to get to the core of what's really going on. And the first thing I I want to do is I want to throw away the term dark night of the soul because it's so inaccurate. And here's the reason why. Your soul doesn't go through any type of dark night. Your soul isn't going through any darkness. What I think the dark night of the soul should actually be called is the dark night of the ego. <laughs> because what's really happening on a spiritual level is that during the dark night of the soul, what's happening is your ego is slowly dissolving and melting away. Your ego is slowly dying. So in my opinion, the dark night of the soul should actually be called the dark night of the ego. <laughs> okay, so let's get that out of the way first. Your soul does not go through any type of darkness or, you know, meaningless phase. Your soul comes to this planet with great purpose and with great joy. Your soul is very enthusiastically always embracing all of life. So it doesn't go through any type of darkness. What seems like darkness to you is really just because your ego, your psyche, the parts of you that kind of make up your personality, that is dissolving, all right? And that's a little scary. That's why it's considered sort of a dark part of your life because the person that your psyche tells you, this identity that you formed around you, you know, around me, like I'm Christina and I used to have this identity, that identity completely falls. And that's why it's considered a dark period in your life life because this is a very scary process for so many people, for the majority of people, including myself. I went through this and the dark night of the soul that I'm now just going to call the dark night because I don't like using the term dark night of the soul, but the dark night for me was extremely painful at times. It was very intense. But I learned that what was really happening was my ego, everything that I believed, my thought structures, who I thought I was, it was just all melting away and that's why it was scary. So if you're going through this phase right now where you feel like everything is dark in your life, there's no meaning in your life, you're just really depressed or sad, just always hold this truth in your heart even if you can't feel it sometimes. Remember that your soul is joyfully expanding, even if it doesn't feel like that to you at the time. Remember, your soul is enthusiastically always just expanding outward. It takes everything that life gives you and it turns it into fuel for its own evolution. So your soul is very joyful going through this process that for you, for your mental and your other bodies may be a little difficult to live through, but for your soul, everything is okay. All right. So I hope that this 
soul versus ego part kind of helps you navigate the period of the dark night. So now that you know that your soul is always joyfully expanding and that the dark night of the soul isn't actually a dark night of the soul, it's a dark night of the ego, what's really happening then, it's not really that life loses its meaning or its purpose. It's that the meaning that your old ego gave to life, that's what's dying, you see? So this meaning, whatever you your ego, your old ego, whatever your psyche, whatever importance your psyche was giving to life or to certain things before the, the dark night started, all of that is falling away. That's why it gives you the impression that life has become meaningless. It hasn't. It hasn't become meaningless at all. It's just become meaningless to the structure of the mind that built your identity. All right. So that's the only thing that's falling. Now, to know that your soul is doing great during a dark night and that this is an ego process, this is fundamentally an ego death and ego dissolution, I think that this kind of helps you navigate the dark soul better by knowing this, but it doesn't make the dark soul any easier because the process of psyche dissolution, the process of ego death, the process of losing your identity is a painful process one way or the other. My own dark night was really intense and very challenging. And I remember that it, for me, it lasted around three to four months. For some people, we'll get into it in a little bit how long it lasts. That's one of the questions in the video. But in my own experience, my first one, <laughs> I've had more than one, and most of us have more than one dark night of the soul in a lifetime. My first one was very intense and very challenging. And something happened just to illustrate how painful and how jarring this dark night of the soul period can be. I remember I was having a particularly bad day and I just walked by a mirror and I walked by the mirror and I just kind of turned and I caught a, gl a, limp, a glimpse of myself in the mirror. And I remember I turned to the mirror, I went up to the mirror and I spent, this was scary, this was scary, this was scary because I spent a good long seconds, I would say, staring in the mirror and I didn't recognize the reflection <laughs> staring back at me. Staring in the mirror and I didn't recognize the reflection <laughs> staring back at me. Do you realize how crazy that is? <laughs> How crazy and how scary to actually look at yourself in the mirror and not recognize the reflection. And this lasted for a few seconds and I remember I just stood there and I looked at myself and it was like my ego completely dissolved in that moment. I didn't recognize who was looking back at me. I didn't recognize who was looking back at me. I didn't recognize who was looking back at me. But something cool happened in the middle of that scariness. <laughs> something cool happened. I started to just look deep into my eyes and I could see them kind of this flicker of light in my eyes started to just look deeply into my eyes and I could see them kind of this flicker of light in my eyes 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 I 
could see my soul. And that just reassured me because even though my mind was freaking out a little bit that I wasn't recognizing who is this person that I was looking at in the mirror, and who is this person that I was looking at in the mirror, But at the same time, my soul was there and I could feel it. It was the first time in my life that I actually saw my soul reflected back to me. I saw the strength and the beauty of that soul. And in that moment, it kind of reassured and calmed down my ego that was freaking out because it was dissolving and dying. And the ego will freak out <laughs> as it's dissolving and dying. So that's a little bit about my own dark night, the first one. Um, it was intense. It was challenging. It was challenging on so many levels because as you're losing your identity I lost my previous beliefs I lost my previous beliefs I when those most faithful lose their faith lost so many ways of thinking. I lost everything that I considered to be Christina at the moment. It was all lost and it was scary for me. So there's a little bit of insight into what a dark night can look like. I did also have periods where I went into a deep state of depression, although I don't like to use that term because a lot of times it gets confused with clinical depression. And so I use depression just to mean that my energy was so low, my vibration was so low that I didn't feel like doing anything. I couldn't even put one foot in front of the other, okay? So I had this kind of depressed energy for a while. I felt sometimes uh, in despair, like nobody was there to help me. I felt very lonely. So these are all kind of feelings that are very common during the dark night, and I certainly went through them, and you may be going through them also. Now there's a lot of talk within spirituality about the very idea of ego death, okay? And I wanna to touch upon this a little bit in this video here. There are some teachers, I've heard teachers, at least two of them, uh, at Cartoli being one of them, and Osho, I've heard them say before that they no longer have egos. Osho's died, but um, I read lots of his books, and he mentions more than once that he no longer has ego. At Cartoli, I've heard him say that also. And that may be true for, you know, great spiritual masters and for maybe a minority of people on the planet, but for myself, and I think for the majority of people, what ends up happening is you don't completely Completely, your ego doesn't die and stay dead. <laughs> okay, so I want to go through that a little bit here. What ends up happening for the majority of people, including myself, I include myself in, in, this, uh, in this group, is our ego will slowly dissolve. You'll lose all of your previous beliefs, you'll lose your identity, this whole ego psyche um, uh, dissolution occurs. And then what happens is there's another ego that's formed in its place that's more flexible, more loving and more spiritually open. Okay, I'm, we, I really believe, and I believe this, and this may change soon, but at this moment in our evolution, I believe that the majority of us on the planet still need an ego and that it's very valuable still on this planet, otherwise we wouldn't have it. So at this moment in human history, I still consider the ego a valuable ally if you know how to mold it and train it, okay? So I just wanted to give this kind of as a side note. Some teachers do believe that the ego completely disappears and then you can live without an ego on this planet and in, the, in this reality. I disagree a little bit and in my experience what happens is the ego dissolves and then in its place a new ego that's more flexible, more pliable, and more spiritually open when those most faithful lose their faith comes into play and, and really creates a new you. All right, now what are the top signs of a dark night? There are lots of them, but I'm gonna give you some of the ones that I also went through and probably the ones that are most common with my clients and the audience and people, viewers that I connect with. So the first thing is people feel like they're in this spiritual, really dark depression, okay? They feel really low, like they almost can't get out of bed. Um, everything, I think the best way of actually, um, of actually illustrating this is that people tell me this all the time. It's like their life 
life is gray. Okay, everything is gray. <laughs> okay, so just imagine a colorless world, black and white. Everything is just gray. There's no meaning. There's no joy. There's just a lot of sadness, maybe nostalgia,、uh, feeling like there's no purpose to life. Very common. Feeling like you're completely disconnected from God. Feeling like you're completely disconnected from God. Feeling like you're completely disconnected from God or from Source Energy, and like you're just here on this planet doing God knows what. That's another、um, another、uh, sign is that you you feel disconnected.、Um, you don't know what to do. You don't feel energy at all. It's almost like even the the day to day common routines, like taking a shower, just getting up and going to work, is a huge challenge for you. All right, so that's another one.、Um, what else? What else?、Um, Um, not knowing what to do with your life, I think that、um, that's also、uh, that I also mentioned. But also a lot of mental things. Why? Because the ego is slowly dying, so it's it's inevitable that you go through some psychological issues also. So it's almost like you don't know who you are anymore. You don't know what you want in life, what you want to do. Maybe passions that you had before you no longer have, or things that you like to do before you no longer like. So it's almost like. The old you completely disintegrates, and in this in-between world, in between the old ego and the new ego, the old you and the new you, there's this phase where you just have no idea what's happening, what's going on, and you just feel difficulty going on day by day, one step at a time. So these are some common signs of the dark night.、Um, but I would I would say that probably the top、uh, symptom or sign of a dark night is that your life just turns meaningless. You feel Like life is meaningless. Remember, this is only the ego that's giving you this illusion. Okay, so you feel like life has become meaningless, and you have no idea what to do or why you're even here. The third question is, why is the dark night of the soul happening to me? <laughs> okay, so here's the thing about the dark night of the soul or the dark night. It happens to you. It's a necessary component of your spiritual evolution. And let me not say necessary because some people don't go through the dark night of the soul. Okay, so it's not that. Everyone has to go through、uh, the dark night of the soul, but with people who are spiritually awakening, the dark night is very common. Okay, so there—that's a better way of saying instead of saying that it's necessary. Nothing is necessary. Okay, nothing is necessary. Okay, so. It's a very common phase of your spiritual awakening, and here's why it's happening to you. As you're going through a spiritual awakening, a spiritual awakening is basically an acceleration or an activation to a higher evolution. Okay, so what happens is your soul and your higher self, your spiritual side of you, activates this this、uh, soul awakening. That's another way of putting it, and you just. Kind of dash off a little bit faster than you were before, so you start evolving a little bit faster than you were before. And as your soul is joyfully expanding and joyfully moving forward, all parts of you have to go with it. <laughs> okay, so you got to keep up with your soul. You got to keep up with your spiritual side. And so it's kind of like your soul is dragging all parts of you along and saying, "Hey, come on, it's time for us to go a little faster." For you to go through a spiritual awakening, you have to dissolve everything that's not. Part of you, so your old self. It's kind of like think of it. Think of it like a snake when they when the snake sheds its skin. Okay, the shedding of the skin is necessary so that a new skin can take hold as the the snake is growing. Okay, the shedding of the skin is necessary so that a new skin can take hold as the the snake is growing. Okay. So it's the same thing with the dark night of the soul, with this spiritual awakening process. Your soul activates; it moves a lot quicker. It's dragging you along, and it's causing you to shed everything that is old, shed your old identity, shed your old ego. All of that, all of that has to go. Your old personality it has to all dissolve. So that's why this is happening to you. This is a very beneficial process for you, and I know that this is hard sometimes for a lot of people to feel because at the time. Time while you're going through、um, the dark night, I've had people, so many people, email me, and I work with clients who go through dark nights that are years. They take years to go through this process. Fortunately for me, it took about three to four months. My first、um, dark night. 
So it, it didn't take me as, as long. And I think part of the reason why it didn't take me as long was I was able to learn very quickly certain tricks and tips that helped me accelerate the process. Okay. And that's what I help clients do now. So that's why it's happening to you. It's happening to you as part of your spiritual evolution. And when you spiritually evolve, your soul takes with you all parts of you. And it's got to be new, <laughs> new, clean, a new you, a new slate. And that's why the old structures have to dissolve. Remember that the dark night happens for you and of you. <laughs> okay. So the dark night is something that is co-created between your soul and the universe. Okay. It's a co-creative process. So even when you're going through a dark night, even when you're going through the darkest periods of the dark night, always remember this in your heart. Your soul is the one that's pulling you along. Okay. This is a process that was initiated by your soul and co-created by the universe, meaning that everything is okay on a soul level. All you have to do is just stay in balance and at peace as your old self just disintegrates. <laughs> I know this is, this is a little bit funny because I know it's easier said than done to say to you, stay in peace and calm just while your whole personality is falling apart on you. <laughs> so it seems like an impossible task, but I did it. So many other people are doing it. You can do this. This is why I'm shooting this video to tell you this. You can do this even in your darkest moments of the dark night. Remember that it's your soul that's commanding the process. Your soul is very wise and you as a being are extremely resilient and you can go through this process for sure. Okay. Now to, I think one of the million dollar questions, and that is how long does a dark night of the soul last? <laughs> People ask me this all the time. And the honest, answer is I have no freaking idea. <laughs> Nobody knows. It's going to be different from person to person. Okay. Um, as I said previously, my dark night lasted about three to four months. Um, but I also have clients who've had dark night of the souls that lasted years uh, before they were able to kind of transition out of it. And I've had other people, I've had clients who actually didn't go through a dark night of the soul. So you see, it's like this whole spectrum of of, of lengths, you know, some people weeks, some people months, some people years. It's impossible for me to answer this accurately. But regardless, however long it's taking, do, try not to focus on that. Try not to dwell on it, especially that word's coming through actually really strongly. So I'm going to repeat it again. Try not to dwell on the process. Okay. So if you feel like, oh, you know, it's, it's been like six months and I'm still here. This is horrible. You see that self-talk of negativity, that self-talk is very, very, um, kind of, um, it's harmful to you because it holds you back and it actually makes you stay in that process of dark night faster than you need to. Okay. So the honest answer is nobody really knows it's different from person to person, but you can do things to help you navigate the process of the dark night as easily and as quickly as possible possible. Of course, your soul is in command, right? This is a co-creation with between your soul and the universe. So your soul is in command. So ultimately this is a soul level decision on how long it's going to take or not. But here's the good news. <laughs> I said previously, and I didn't want to scare you when I said previously that most of us go through more than one dark night of the soul. And that is true. But here's the good news. Usually the first one that you go through is the longest and most difficult. Okay. Now it's not that you you're only going to have one because remember, if your soul is constantly evolving, right? If your soul activates itself every once in a while and says, Hey, come along, we're moving a little faster. It makes sense that you're going to have more than one dark night of the soul because your ego is going to have to dissolve more than once in a lifetime. Okay. Your ego is actually going to come to a point where it becomes so flexible that it's kind of like that snake shedding its skin. The snake is, doesn't have a problem. It's just like, Hey, one more skin coming off new one coming in. Okay. So the snake is very flexible at this, at these changes, at the loss of its skin. And the ego becomes that way. Also after that first dark night of the soul, 
especially if you master the process and you're going to master the process by the end of this video because I'm going to give you very actionable tips to help you navigate this this process. So you're becoming a dark night master <laughs> after this video. OK, so at, especially if you can, if you're able to master these steps to master and kind of uh, master the art of accelerating the dark night of the soul, of helping it, of not getting in its way, then what happens is any dark night after after the first one is really a piece of cake. <laughs> it's a piece of cake to a point that I don't even call it dark night anymore. It's just literally, oh, there we go. My ego is, you know, my soul is wanting to evolve faster and my ego is dissolving again. Big deal. <laughs> Here we go again. Okay. So it gets to a point where I don't even call it the dark night anymore because it's not a negative experience anymore. You're going to come to a point where the dissolution of your ego is not a negative experience anymore. So that's the good news. Okay. Okay, now on to the most important question I think of this video for the majority of people and that is how can I get out of a dark night of the soul more quickly okay so let me start by saying that remember that this is a soul level process okay so you don't really have your lower self your mind you don't really have much control over the process once it starts okay so i want to start here all right you can't really force yourself to come out of a dark night it's your soul that commands this one <laughs> okay so just i want to start it off that way okay you can't force yourself to get out of a dark night until your soul is ready for it until your soul is like, all right, you've cleaned what you needed to clean and now we're ready. And the image that I like to give clients sometimes to, to kind of help illustrate this is let's imagine that your soul decides that it's going to run a race. Okay. <laughs> so just pretend that your soul is going to run a marathon and your soul just starts running along, running, 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 running. And let's pretend that your ego doesn't want to follow. <laughs> so your ego's like, I'm not running a marathon. That's a stupid idea. I'm not doing it. Well, your soul is not going to go without a part of itself, which is the ego. Okay. So your soul is going to take all of you with it. So what the soul does is it doesn't give you a choice. It grabs you by the wrist and it says, you're going with me and it drags you <laughs> and all and the only choice that you have in that moment imagine imagine if someone grabbed you by the wrist did not let go and started running with you down the street what option would you have you would have two options at that moment you would either run side by side with that person that's holding you, making the process a lot easier, or you just fall on the floor and, and just kick and scream and say no like a tantruming child, but that wouldn't help because you'd still be dragged along. And so the dark night is much the same way. Your soul is pulling you, your, but your soul is giving you ultimate decisions. And that is, do you want to go kicking and screaming? <laughs> or do you want to go in freedom side by side with me? And that is the million dollar trick or the pro tip for this is to learn to not go kicking and screaming as you're going along this process to learn to run side by side with your soul wherever it's taking you that is the master's tip run side by side with your soul wherever it's taking you don't fall on the floor don't scream and kick don't make your soul pull you because it's going to make the process slower and more painful right if you if you were being dragged in a marathon, if you were being dragged by someone, that person would finish the race a lot slower than if he just let go of you and ran with you and ran by himself or if you ran next to him, right? <laughs> so that's what your soul is saying. Your soul is not going to let go of you. It's not going to let go of the ego part of you. It's going to drag it with it. So the question then is, if I really do want to get out of this dark night faster, then what's my choice? Maybe by kicking and screaming and, and staying in negativity and wallowing and just, and just being resistant to life, maybe I'm actually slowing the process down. Okay. So the first thing and most important thing that you could ever do in the dark night of the soul is to get up on your feet and actually go wherever your soul wants to take you. Allow yourself to be dragged. <laughs> 
or not really dragged because now you're going willingly. So allow yourself to go wherever your soul wants to take you. And that's where the first practice of three key practices that I'm going to share with you to help you do this. That's exactly what the first practice is. The first practice is the art of surrender. <laughs> I actually think that surrender, this was the first thing that I learned. And I think maybe it's, it's just a natural part of me because this was actually a bit easier. I know that, um, that for some surrender can be a bit difficult, especially for people who have very controlling egos and who have maybe had very painful past experiences, including childhood trauma to be able to become surrendered and pliable and just willing to go wherever the soul wants to take you is difficult for people who've had difficult childhoods, including myself. But for me, the art of surrender was a bit easier. Okay. So maybe it is for you. Maybe it's not, but this is the first key practice that's important to get you out of the dark night more quickly is to surrender, surrender to wherever your soul wants to take you. And I practice surrender in various ways, sometimes with meditation. Other times the, probably the, the best way that I practice surrender was especially initially during the dark night, the initial phases of the dark night. I remember I was in such a state of turmoil that even meditation was difficult for me. And so what I started doing was I was just, I would just talk to the universe, talk to my guides. I still do, but I, I would say statements and mantras every single day. I'd look in the mirror and I'd say statements or mantras, or I'd just be walking down the street and I'd say mental statements or mantras. And the statements can be, or affirmations can be something like this. I surrender to and then you complete the sentence however you want. So on some days I would say, I surrender to life. I surrender to my soul's will. Okay. So just complete that sentence however you want and make your own affirmations. But one that I used a lot was I surrender to complete the sentence. Okay. Um, and I think the one that I used the most probably when thinking about it is, was the mantra, I surrender to my soul's will. Um, okay. So, so that was one of them, but you can use any other affirmations. Another affirmation that I still use today, but I definitely use during my dark night was the affirmation. I drop resistance to that really helps. It's a little different twist on the, on the, on the other affirmation, but it was so helpful to calm my mind because my ego is freaking down, freaking out. Remember, as your ego's dissolving, it's not going to go without a fight. So as it's dissolving, it's freaking out. And as it's freaking out, it's trying to hold on to control in any way that it sees possible. So this affirmation, I drop resistance to was really helpful and very soothing to me. So I would say something like, I drop resistance to this process. I drop resistance to what life is presenting me. You see, and I could keep going on, but just start the statement with, I drop resistance to, and then complete that sentence however you want. I drop resistance to life. I drop resistance to what life is presenting me. I drop resistance to this process. Okay. And you just keep going on and on and on. I remember initially I would say this maybe some days I would have to say this every 15 or 20 minutes. I would say these statements and I would repeat them over and over and over again because I was having such a hard time. So this art of surrender, this is crucial. That's why it's the first key practice that, that I share with you. Surrender let go of control, let go of having to know everything and what's going on, hold that knowing in you that your soul is in command, it knows what it's doing, and then let it go. Surrender everything else. Looking back now, I think that this, this key practice, this practice of surrender was a bit easier for me at the time because I actually went through the dark night about a year into my spiritual awakening. In the first year of my spiritual awakening, it was a year filled with bliss, with connection, where I just felt connected to source energy. I felt so joyful and so ecstatic and so blissful. This is, a, this is one of the common, um, common signs or common phases of a spiritual awakening is that initial phase of feeling blissful of feeling connected to all things. And I spent a year doing that. So I had already connected to my guides. I was able to channel my guides. I could hear their guidance. So I, w I went through a year of this before the dark night of the soul hit me. So I think that, that going through this phase, 
ways, and not all of us go through the, the phases of spiritual awakening in the same way, but for me, I was very fortunate and I'm very thankful that I actually went through the state of bliss at first because it gave me a taste of what reality really is, right? So when the dark night of the soul hit me, even though I kind of felt like I lost connection to the universe, I lost connection to source, and, and I felt like I was in some kind of meaningless, bottomless pit, even though that's what my mind was telling me, I knew that that wasn't true because I had just experienced a whole year of bliss. And this knowing, once you know something, you can't unknow it. So I think that this, having spent this year going through this blissful state, when the dark night of the soul hit me, I was then able to surrender more to the process because I knew what reality really was and I wasn't really allowing my mind to trick me into an illusion that wasn't true. So this, you know, even if you don't go through a phase of bliss before for the dark night because I've had people say to me, you know, I feel like I've been in the dark night of the soul for years. I don't even remember ever feeling bliss. I've had people say that to me. So if this is where you are at, if you haven't had a taste of the bliss of connection, of being connected to oneness, of being connected to God. If you haven't gone through that phase of your spiritual awakening yet and the dark night hits you early on, then please just keep my words in your heart art you can still surrender, even if you haven't felt that bliss before, because the bliss is coming. <laughs> okay. So just surrender to it. You are connected. You are loved. And the only reason that life feels meaningless to you right now is just because your ego is slowly dying and slowly dissolving. And in this third practice, it's the spiritual tool of energy cleansing, daily energy cleansing. I cannot tell you how important it is to know how to work your energy, to know how to cleanse your energy every single day, especially when you're going through a profound spiritual process like the dark night of the soul. Okay. So the daily energy clearing can be, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, really woo woo. If you're not woo woo spiritual, I, I'm woo woo spiritual sometimes, but sometimes I'm really down to earth spiritual. So you can do an energy cleansing in a very simple way or a more complex way. If you're more into spirituality. What I use and what I use in my daily life actually right now, it's just pretty simple stuff. And what I used in the dark night of the soul was all, also pretty simple stuff. And it can just be as simple as sitting in meditation, closing your eyes and just visualizing a white light come down from the heavens, just down into your crown chakra, the top of your head and just bathe your whole body in light. Okay. From head to toe, you're just going to feel your whole body being cleansed with light. And then you're going to visualize any darkness or residue, just go down into the earth. You're going to send any dense energy, any negativity, any negative thought forms, anything like that, anything that's not making you feel good. You're going to visualize that as a dark energy. And you're just going to watch as the light kind of pushes the dark energy out of you and down into the earth right below you, whether you're standing or sitting, and you're just going to watch that negative energy go right into the earth and you're just going to stay there in this glowing kind of visualizing yourself glowing white light okay be strong in the lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. 
In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people.